Okay, Anna and I are popping in really fast at the top of this show. Yeah. Because there's been a bit of confusion. Yes. Um, Anna, people think that we will be at KetoCon in April. We, we've seen a lot of that. A lot of people have been asking. Okay, now, yeah, and, and I for had one. i to say not that I'm aware. I for, first of all, I didn't even know it was in April. I, I knew I that found that out. I, I knew that KetoCon was coming up in April. Mm, okay, but no you're one. More, no you're one more in, with it than I am. No one invited me. H- have you been invited? No. Okay, so we've not been invited to KetoCon, so no, we won't be there. No. So, folks, if you're if you're buying tickets because you want to meet Anna and watch her cook or whatever, for whatever odd reason you want to see me walk around the stage and well, yell, you gave a good speech, sir. Oh, you're too and, kind. And yell. Yeah, I yell a lot. At any rate, um, uh, no, we, we've not been invited. Just to clear that up, for some reason, there's whole groups of people that are now saying they can't wait to meet us at KetoCon. We will not be there. We're not upset with you know, No, no, everything's with anyone. fine. Um, but we just want to be really clear. Yeah, Robin, Robin is a great woman, and we, we want that show to yeah, be yeah. a success. By all means, Go. But we just won't be there because no one has asked us to be there. So <laughs> <laughs> should we admit that publicly? Yeah, I guess people don't want to see us. All right. So now on with the show. <laughs> Look, this is Gina talking about her book, her extra mom book. My extra mom. I'm holding it up. It's uh, just to reset. Um, it's a it's a story about the little boy who kind of looks like my little guy and a, a mom who kind of looks like me. And uh, he, just about what it's like to have an extra mom in his life. And I'm really excited about it. The front, the beginning, there's a note just to the grownups that talks about, you know, why I think this is important and, and what we're doing. And then the story. And then the second half is all questions, uh, get to know you questions for the extra mom and the kid or anyone you want to get to know better. And uh, I'm so proud of it. I'm so excited about it. And it's really, really pretty. My illustrator, Lindsay Parker, is incredible. So just leave it out like a coffee table book, too, because it's really pretty. And I love it. You did the family tree thing right there on the cover. Yep. It's the family tree. The got every son, sister, grandpa, aunt, father, grandma, stepsister, everybody. And then the clouds, my extra mom. Yeah, and that is available on Amazon. Just search "My Extra Mom" or "My Extra Mom Gina Grad," and um, you can also go to. Depending on when this airs, I think it'll be ready. Uh, my What's website. First? This is a. Huh? This comes out. Yeah, on- yeah, first. yeah. Myextraseries.com because if you think I'm done after one, uh, uh, uh. Myextraseries.com and on Amazon. So is it out now on March first? It's out. It's out. Okay, so folks, tune in. Uh, this Friday, and Gina will do a whole show with me about that book. Oh, this is so, so exciting. And I know this affects a lot of people. There's like 180 million people who have a step family. So, well, look, I was thrown into it. Uh, yeah, I, you are. You know, um, I, I fell in love with a girl in front of Starbucks. And then, you know, <laughs> next thing you know, she's, she's got yeah. a kid. And I'm going to be honest, you look, I knew about the kid when we, you know, right. she brought her kid up on the first date. That wasn't even really a date. She didn't even like me the first time. And, um, you know, so I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. She <laughs> brought the kid up. I'm like, bring up whatever you want. This, this is one and done baby. And, um, and not because of me, because of her, uh, she just wasn't into me. And, um, so one thing led to another and here, you know, you have to consider that when you, yeah. once you, start seriously dating mom and once you end up in the hammock with mom yep in my case now you know i'll never forget that moment of leaving the house going oh shit all of a sudden i remembered the kid again right you know because she would only see me when the kid was at dad's house so right but you know, we, you know, you sleep together. That means you're going to a new level and yeah. um, you'll probably be around in the morning. You know, they say semen is, is a strong glue for women. That's super, oh my God. Yeah. That's super glue for women. You you, you put a little semen on them and they're, they're stuck. You've never heard that before. Oh, you. <laughs> when you squeal, you can't, I can't hear you. You, you, you squeal. I said, what? 
is wrong with you? We are having a wholesome conversation. And we still are. I'm just saying that once semen is involved, that's the strongest glue of a relationship. Sure. Semen, sailors, Vikings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you do have a good point. I'll give you that. And because, of course, there's going to be a My Extra Dad book uh, coming out. If he looks a little bit like you, don't be totally surprised because I know you know what it's like more than anybody. Yeah, look, I mean, you're there and then all of a sudden it's like, I'm, I'm going, shit, not only does she have a kid, but it's a girl. Mm -hmm. What do you do with a girl? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I had three brothers. I played sports so my whole life. I, I didn't know from a girl. That's a good question. And and that's why in this book, and this pertains across gender, I mean, it would apply for girls just as much. But in your case, um, what was something that you did to sort of ease this girl into the idea of you being around? Um, well, you know, it started out where, you know, Tallulah is just super intelligent. So there was no rubbing around you know it wasn't right you know no faking it so it wasn't like hey we, we're at starbucks and i just ran into my really special friend Vinny. <laughs> we didn't do any of that you know um yeah. it was you know you know my friend Vinny, who i'm dating is coming over tonight mm -hmm. you know serena didn't you know we didn't beat around the bush about and did you was she standoffish or was she curious how old was she Tennish. Oh wow, that's a tough um, age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I I noticed that. Yeah, you know, I, I noticed something that Serena didn't notice early on, and we'll get into this on a Friday show. Yeah, let's because we got bigger stuff. To, we got pop oh. to get into on this show. Yeah, we got way bigger news. But I, I'll just I'll just you know warm it up with this, and please bring it up. Remind me when we do the Friday show. I will. I'll write it down. I, I remember Tallulah. And I was the one that noticed this because I worked with kids. You know, I, I was in school right. for a long time with kids. And uh, I remember saying, you know, whenever she sees you and I enjoying each other's company, like I say something and you laugh and the whole thing, she, she jumps in with, I'm bored or I'm sad or yeah. I'm, and Serena goes, well, she might be bored or sad. I say, no, she she's trying to drive a wedge between, you know, whatever that is for her. She doesn't know she's doing it, but she, so instead of Serena going, oh, baby, how can, well, what can I do? I mean, the whole thing is, you know, we started saying, okay, you can have your feelings. Go, go take those bad boys in the other room. <laughs> you know? And then she started hanging around more. And there was a lot of stuff. If you don't mind writing this down, I want to get yeah, into please. different things like uh, when she thought she hated fish. Please bring that story up when we do the Friday show. I, I'm very curious. Yeah. And, um, you know, so th there were a lot of things like that, you know, where you have to pick and choose. And and I think the biggest thing with us was she was, Tallulah's dad for the audience had, had and still does have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So her sport was horseback riding. Oh, boy. And, um so I I know a lot about horses. I've been into horses my whole life. So we had that in common. I so would there, go watch yeah, her jump that's and great. do all the stuff and go watch her practice jumping. So in between clients, if I was passing the, the barn in Calabasas where she was, I would stop for 20 minutes, you know, which was, that's, it was cathartic nice. to leave. And, you know, and, you know, I would go and watch and, that's great. I think, I think, you know, she, she enjoyed that. You know, it was like, we, we had something. Together. And that you, and I can't wait to talk more about that. Cause that's pr pretty much what this book is about. Like, you know, and like Adam Crowley says, it's free, you know, you yeah. stopping by to show her that you care is free. And it, it, it is also invaluable. The first time she loves country and Western music now, or what country and Western music has become. Mm. I introduced that to her. She she didn't know from country and western music, and she she got in my truck first time. She was like, "What is this?" I, I, it wasn't like she went, "What is this?" Oh my god! You know, she was like, "What is this?" And I was like, "This is called country and western music." It's please don't tell me it was David Allen Coe. No, thank you. But it was probably some of the other outlaws. Oh my god! 
really wailing. I don't know, just some of the guys. <laughs> um, but no, no, it was more contemporary stuff, you right? Know, you know, um, and that was right around the time that people like Shania Twain were, you know, the oh. the stars were getting more sure. popular. So th there was something we can play with there. And so uh, you're finding common ground, showing up unexpectedly to show that you're supportive. I can't wait to, uh, and this is probably, I'm assuming stuff that you haven't thought about in a long time. So I can't wait to, to get more into it when we, when we do that show. Yeah. And you might want to write this down. Um, I ended up having a great relationship with her real dad, right. in which I think is, man, if you can pull that off, I know not everyone can pull that one off. I think that was the key to everything. <laughs> wow. So and I I can tell you that it's not totally necessary to be, become one big family like you guys have to have a great relationship with a kid because everybody's situation is different and there's there's all kinds of ways to to make them feel like there's it's not like they say it's not pie it's not like that anyone's going to run out it's an infinite um an infinite amount of love and they shouldn't uh, be made to feel otherwise and I think that you have a lot of good tips, whether you knew it or not. Well, you, you look, you, you feel it out as you go. That that yeah. that's certainly how it you know how it happens. Um, so that's what we did. We just all right. We just felt around. So I can't wait to to have your book in my greedy little hands because <laughs> once I read it, I'll probably be recommending it outside of this show. Oh, thank you. And if you are grabbing it and you do think it's a little bit all right, if you could put a nice review, that will help. Amazon really likes that. Folks, even if you just ordered the book and it hasn't come in yet, go give Gina a five star review. If you want to redact that later on, you can. But it <laughs> helps. I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying this. Go do it, because that's how that's how we got my book up the ladder for people to find. Right. Make sure, Gina, you get all your family and friends. As soon as they order it, give the review right away. Then they can go back. If they if they don't like it, they can redact yeah. it. They won't remember. By all means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you. And I can't wait to talk more about that. But yeah. like you said earlier, we have something way more important to discuss. Oh, yes, we do. Um, this is the second week in a row. Uh, I don't have music for this yet, but let's use this as the music. <laughs> Sad trombone. Um, <laughs> Gina, um, you've asked me to get another food here for this week. What is it? Yeah, um, this week's food is something that I assume Vinny has had because everyone on the planet has had a Pop-Tart, a frosted cherry Pop-Tart. That is as traditional as traditional goes in the toaster pastry genre the frosted cherry pop tart everyone's had one they're ubiquitous i would imagine that even Vinny could tell us off the top of his head what it tastes like because he's probably had a million of them in his past we've actually talked about this product before on the monday show and we got mari on the phone oh um, oh, oh and because i told uh, anna i said I I'm pretty sure I've never tasted a pop tart. What? I'm pretty sure because that's not something we would my mom would bring into the house. But even at your friends' houses? I, I just don't ever remember. Wow. We didn't really eat at other kids' houses. Yeah. Yeah. The only house I ate at besides mine was like Jim. Jim Noel, my best friend right across the street. He used to like to eat at my house. And as he would call it, he would go, it's the runt and on the runt and on the house. And um, we always had pasta and chicken, you know, like chicken and stew and rice and Ooh. and all this kind of, you know, kind of Italian Cajun. -y oh, stuff. delicious. And, um, you know, my grandmother was over the stove and everybody's yelling at everybody and you can yell across the table while we're <laughs> eating and. Sometimes knives would be thrown. What what have you? you know, it's a <laughs> um, so everyone lived. Um, rather than have an eye, but <laughs> but the bottom line is, I used to love going to Jim's house because it was more gentrified across the street. His dad sure. was his dad owned the bank in town. Oh, ooh and, la la! Yeah, boy, you want to talk about juxtapose and. Um, you go over there and there was steak at night. It was Ooh. like, 
and his mom was a gourmet cook and she would make cakes and every uh, it's like you know we had like fig cookies and <laughs> right sure <laughs> that's why we never had something like this i mean my grandmother would make fig cookies oh, and she would God. slave over the stove so there was no there was none of this it was fig yeah there was no process and it was not exactly cost effective you know it probably uh, was a uh, you know, even a little rich for the grad's blood back in the day, all these snack, you know, boxes of food. Yeah, there, there was nothing like this in the pantry. Um, right. It was good. So I'm pretty sure I've never had a Pop-Tart. Uh, okay. There was other junk food, but not this. It was like a Snickers or a, a Milky Way. Was, well, that's funny because, uh, like I said, I was trying to, we did Flaming Hot Cheetos last week because everybody eats them. It's like the thing now. But Pop-Tarts, that's as that's as American as apple pie. I mean, everybody's had a cherry pop tart. So I will say that if you really do want to be a gourmet, you must put it in the toaster. Um, but most people, a lot of people don't. You just eat them out of the, the thing. It's not like they're raw. They're pop tarts. But if you really want to get fancy, you warm it up. Either way, people eat them out of the box. I have people in this house who eat them out of the box or did. Uh, not these days, but um, I, I got to know, I got to get your take on a Pop-Tart. Okay. And I'll tell you this. I've seen guys back when I was camping and hiking and holding. This is one. I knew you can eat it without putting it in a toaster. I've seen people pull them out of the Mylar package. Sure. And just chomp on them. Right. Um, so and two, two to a package, because God forbid you only have one. So Gina, before we get into what it is, um, when you open a package, um, you, you get this Mylar thing. And there's two in there. I can feel two pushing mm -hmm. around in there. Um, I can't read the ingredients, but I can see um, that a serving size is two of these. So this is a serving within this package. Right. It's 70 grams of carbohydrates. Now, Serena, when she went to the store to get these, um, she she had trouble finding them. What? She didn't know where to find them. She went to cookies. Oh, no, no, no. Cookie aisle and get these. These are right in the breakfast cereal aisle. I was, they're served I was as a breakfast. Say it. So yes. unlike these Cheetos that I had last week, which is meant as a junk food, you know that going in, this is being marketed as a... As breakfast. Breakfast. A bre this is a breakfast bar. So... Um, Gina, I, I can see the 70 uh, grams of carbs here. Yeah. Uh, there's only a couple of grams of protein. So you're not getting any protein there. Oh, God, no. There's Nothing 30 grams of sugar, right? Uh, 30 grams of sugar and 70 grams total carbs. So uh, this is this is a, a shitstorm. Can you read the, the small print on your big computer yes. thing there? Um, the the ingredients? Mm, yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm going to, and then I'm going to stop down and put chaser lights around the one ingredient I cannot believe is in here. But let's start from the top. So, of course, we have enriched flour. That's, you know, wheat flour, niacin, uh, riboflavin, whatever, folic acid. Next ingredient, corn syrup. Next ingredient, high fructose corn syrup, dextrose, soybean and palm oil, sugar, bleached wheat flour, and then contains you know, two percent or less of wheat starch, salt, dried cherries, dried apples, citrus, citric acid, blah 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 blah, uh, modified wheat starch, gelatin, caramel color, xanthan gum, soy lecithin, red number forty, natural flavor, uh, red forty lake, yellow six, and carnuba wax. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I did a thing on my Instagram about another product that contained carnuba. Um, Carnuba, it, it was under the one I, I have listed the difference between shit and Shinola. Right. Look at my Instagram because um, Carnuba wax is used as a shoe polish. Um, so you got to ask yourself, is this shit or is it Shinola? It's <laughs> or are you going to buff your car out, you know, after you uh, take it to the car wash? Um. By the way, carnauba wax, as it turns out, is probably the least offensive thing in there, Gina. That's um, true. It's just wax. Yeah, it's just uh, wax. Uh, so many other stuff you mentioned was horrifying. Um, yeah. Well, know, the, first, the yellow, you had two or three yeah. different yellow dyes. Yeah. Uh, red 40, um, two kinds of red 40, uh, red 40 lake and yellow six and blue one. 
and this thing is already crumbling. I hope I didn't get a bad batch. Oh, yeah, right. And the second, third, fourth ingredients, um, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, um, dextrose, soybean oil, sugar, and sugar. Okay. So I'm guessing the sugar is all on top here. Well, it's a lot of it. Yeah, th there's a big dollop of, of hard, crusty sugar. And I'm guessing the rest of the sugar would be whatever the filling is. Yeah, like a pie filling kind of. Now, Gina, I'm going to I'm gonna break it in half. I don't want to get yes. it over my desk because it doesn't look like the stuff goes all the way to the end. And I, I want to really, I'm not taking two bites of this. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> okay, then, <laughs> then yes, go from the middle where the jammy whatever is. Because yes. you're right, the, the corners are very dry. <laughs> yeah, I, I was correct about that. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so um, here here we go. He's never had a pop tart, ladies and gentlemen. Go right, right in the middle. All right, I'm gonna right do the middle, the middle middle side. Here. here he goes. He can't do it. Remember a million years ago when you when you told me to get the finger pricker and I couldn't do it. I was so scared. That's, That's what something you look I like do every day. <laughs> That's what you look like right now. All right, here we go. Okay, it's in. It's crumbly. He <laughs> he's thinking. He's chewing. His eyes are sort of darting around. <laughs> he doesn't look super happy. It's like he's trying to work out a math equation. All right. Nothing. Now, remember, I have a pretty good palate. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Is a cherry pop tart. All right. There's nothing in here that tastes like cherry at all. Uh, Me. I'm gonna take another tiny bite. Yay! Of I, I don't want to get the end. I'm gonna see. Just if I get, get the, the jam. Yes. Uh, um. Because right now, I, I feel they're, like, they're very dry too. I feel like there's a coating. Yes around my mouth yes that there's like a i'm just noticing this now all right i need to i need to cleanse my palate Hang you on. do need some water or something because all i can taste is like a chalky kind of the, yes. the flour because you got to remember gina i don't ever have enriched wheat flour so right and that's the thing i mean if he was having like a pastry say from like a you know french pastry shop or something he would you know and they they make like homemade you know house done pop tarts or whatever and they're delicious they're too sweet but they're delicious he's getting you know what we all get the boxed you know made by a robot in a factory and it's not um it's not what you think it is a lot of the time okay so I've broken it out to where I can get a chunk of what's in the middle. I had, yeah. even though I broke it in half, I had too much of the chalky end piece. Yeah. And my whole mouth just filled with chalk. Yeah. And it just covered my palate. So I'm taking a, a second little nibble and I'm going to nibble it a lot to see if I can get something out of it. <laughs> okay. He just took a little nibble and he did like a, he broke it into like quadrants. So he got a pointy part with all the, frosting or the icing and the, the cherry jam or whatever it is and less crust because the crust threw him off and freaked him out okay okay i got the chalky again yeah so no matter what you do you're getting the chalky it does not taste like cherry to me whatsoever although it does have a strong flavor of robitussin what? It tastes like Robitussin to me. Or as Chris Rock would call it, the Tussin. The Tussin. But e the the, uh, the thick layer of hard, crackle hard icing doesn't even cover that up? That doesn't taste like anything. I was trying to see if I could just get the icing separated. Let's see, I have a pocket knife over here. Oh my God. I wanted, I, I'm, because that just tastes like nothing. It, it doesn't have a flavor to it. They got little flavor crystals. Hang on, Gene. It does. It, it looks like confetti. He's literally going to get like a multi-tool. You know, you just give this to someone and they eat it. Not Vinny. No, he I, has I, to really I, dissect it. I need to know what's doing here. I just don't want any of it to end up on the floor where my dog might get it. Oh, yeah. That's not right. 
So, you know. Okay, that is a that know. is a pocket knife. I don't know if I can he's, scrape this off. He's probably cleaned and gutted more fish with that thing. No, this isn't the kind you use for fish. Um, okay, I wouldn't know. This is kind of like, um, you know. Okay. Okay. He's he's <laughs> dissected it. I, I have just the, um, I have two little pieces of just the sugar here. Just the frosting on top, the icing. He just popped that in his mouth. He's literally just tasting the hard, hard pack icing on top. I don't think he's enjoying it. This is not one of these uh, cheat day meals that I think Vinny would pick. Mm, no, not at all. I put like a teeny tiny piece of the pastry part in his mouth. Put a little bit of filling on it. There is absolutely no taste to it whatsoever. Folks, do this. If you have this at your house, you can see what I did. I skimmed the top. I took the top off. You did like a skin graft. Yeah, I just took my knife and shivved it in there. Yeah. And, and just took the top off. And um, I don't know what that is. Again, it's kind of like the Menchie's yogurt, where they're convincing you that that tastes like something. Mm. I, this is an abomination of... Oh, my desk is all messed up. Oh, he's mad. This don't is, be mad at me. You told me to pick something. I, I cannot believe that anyone would serve that to their kid and that kid would return home after school. I would and just, don't forget, um, don't forget, it's in the breakfast aisle. This is a breakfast food. It's a breakfast food. I'm pretty sure if I ate both pieces, I would I would get a headache or something. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel weird. I still have that coating in my mouth. Let me see if I can get that out with coffee. Yeah, get that oh, bitter coffee. Come on. Gina, talk to her. They can't hear me swishing espresso. Yeah, so he's going to do one of his, you know, like coffee tasting swishy swirlies. He's doing it. He's gargling, literally gargling like mouthwash, but with cold, bitter espresso because he would rather taste that than the Pop-Tart. And yeah. I did him a favor. For anyone listening, we all know what they taste like. I even allowed him to get frosted instead of plain because I thought he would enjoy it more. I was wrong. There's nothing that, uh, here's the thing. That's 30 grams of sugar. You know how I, I, I have a sugar addiction? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't cause me to keep eating it. Wow. It doesn't taste, it tastes like a, again, it's, it's like some kind of chemical Franken food. I, the fact that they've convinced people that, that, because this is a very, this is Kellogg's, right? Oh yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. It's a it's very universal. popular product. Like, this thing has been around since I was a kid. This product has been around since probably, you know, look it up. Find out how long this has been around. Um, the Pop-Tart? Oh, God. Has there ever been a time without it? Let's see. It's been around since my childhood. Uh, my mom never got them, so they couldn't have been around for her childhood. 1964. Two years after I was born. So 58-year-old product. I, I don't. Wow. Wow. And and just to say, well, Gina, technically that wasn't the frosted Pop Tart. You're right. You're right. Let me correct myself. The frosted Pop Tart is new. It's from 1967. Okay, so they came up with that a couple of years later. Yeah, that's not like a new product. Man, there there is nothing, nothing good about anything in that pack. I mean, it's just not delectable at all. Now, Gina, you've obviously had this product of course i've had a pop tart I, i'm an american I, I need to go from you yeah does it taste any different if you cook it if you um it up? am you know, i missing something there i i could be wrong because it has been a, a hot minute since i've had a pop tart something when you said the chalky coating it's like that totally came back to me i've forgotten that was even an element of a pop tart some part of me feels like if you crisp it up, you get less of that chalky coating. But other than that, it's just a hot pop tart. So you remember that you you remember that when I just tasted. I know exactly what you, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have come to mind because I wouldn't have thought to I, it just I wouldn't have thought about it. But when you said I feel it's like chalky and I feel like my mouth and my throat are coated, you are a hundred percent right about that. 
I, I'm looking at it over there as if it's a scientific experiment. What do you think that is? Do you think that's like a shelf stabilizer or is it just? Yeah, I think I think it's the enriched uh, flour. It's, it's the first ingredient. It's got to be. It's got to be. I, I never would have even thought about it, but you're absolutely right. So you hate it. I honestly thought, and like I said, I said, get the frosted, frosted cherry. Everyone's had it. It's been around since the sixties. I thought you'd say, you know what? I get it. I mean, it's not good for you, but I get it. So, but no, no, I, I don't even get, you know, look and folks, I'm not, I'm, I'm not putting on any kind of, you know, this Holier is, than thou. Yeah. If something tastes good, I'm going to say, I can see why people binge on this. Right. I get yeah. potato chips. I yeah. get it. Um, so don't do potato chips next week because, you know, do don't something. worry. I want to do stuff that I I mean, I'm I'm truly we know how you feel about potato chips. I'm truly curious about what's you know, I've made a huge list of things that we've all had. Sometimes we all have. And you've either never had it or it's so in your rear view mirror, you would need to taste it again and let us yeah. know what you think. And the last time I had a Cheeto, they only came in original Cheeto. In cheese, che Cheeto flavor. Right. And look, Cheetos weren't like, I wasn't into Funyuns. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids are like, oh, the Funyuns and the Cheetos. I was more into um, like, if I had anything, uh, like I remember doing basketball season, you go play at other gyms. It, it was a pretty common thing to take a bag of Fritos Mm -hmm. Hold them sideways and the they were clipped the top off and then pour chili and cheese on top yes. of and hand you like a little boat. And it's not a bad idea. Yeah, and you, you know, when you you're know. in a hurry. So when you're at a basketball tournament, I remember like that was one of the things at a basketball tournament because right. man, that tasted like something. You had chili and cheese and yeah, and the crunchy from the thing. I, I remember that being like a treat I loved as a kid. Yeah. That's like, you know, Boy Scouts doing it overnight around a campfire. You'll do something like that. Yeah. And I told Serena because it was written in your notes to get either the cherry or the s'mores. Yeah. I was kind of hoping she'd come on with it because the s'more, but I can't imagine they would have tasted. Oh, Vinny, you would have thrown up. That's kind of why I said you could have it because it would, I knew it was going to backfire. Cherry is the one that we've all had. We've all heard of. S'more is a newer one. And it's it's also an abomination. I just kind of wanted your thoughts, but I let trust me, you got off easy having the cherry and not the s'more. Yeah. So um there you have it, folks. Um I hate uh, to do this to you. No, no, I, I like doing this because I need to know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. by the way, other things I've never eaten, I'll give you guys one more. I've never been to a, a um is it called Chick-fil-A? What's it called? Chick? You've never had Chick-fil-A? No. Never been to Chick. And I've hey. never been to Raising Cane's, and that started in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You, we just got a Raising Cane out here. I got to tell you, we tried it. Eh. Eh. Uh, you, you know the story behind that guy, right? Mm -mm. Um, his professor, he was in um, business school at LSU, and you have to do a model of a business you can start. And the guy flunked him. He said <gasps> the, the, a, a business of just making chicken tenders and fries and a drink. He goes, it, it would never work. No matter, and he, he proved it by doing it in real life. He got funded. Wow. Okay. I love a, I love a funny story like that. Um, you've never had Chick-fil-A? Never had Chick-fil-A. Huh. Um, I, I, look, I grew up where Popeye's was created. Al That's Copeland so Al Copeland was a friend. Now, you understand why people eat Popeye's. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just to give an example, it's not like he thinks he's too good for everything. He get that I we have a Popeye's not far from here and I've had it and that is a batter that we can all get behind. That is crispity. Yeah. It is nothing, delicious. Folks, there's nothing healthy about Popeye's. Oh god, I'm not saying that. I'm saying no, I no. Vinny can even understand why people eat it when they just want something oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. delicious. When I was in college and and I can have a fancy meal, it was Popeye's. When you could have a fancy meal? Yeah, I didn't have any. Who had money? I mean, I was oh, on my own. I didn't have two dimes to rub together. And um, yeah, if I, if I, you know, I was a bouncer. If I did a couple of extra nights or sure. something, I you and you, you, you um, upcharge, you get a biscuit. There was no biscuit in my life. Oh, okay. It was like give me because I was still pumping iron and everything. Oh, like, sure. All the chicken, you know. And, so even um, when you're eating Popeyes, you're still conscious, conscious of, oh, I, dear me, I can't have the biscuit. 
I just, it didn't taste like my grandmother's biscuits. Okay, so. that I can understand. Uh, no, I wasn't against eating a biscuit that my grandmother made. <laughs> kidding? From scratch? Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, you guys be just be rest assured. I have a list that reflects everything we want Vinny to try. Trust me. And if you don't trust me, how about this? You, um, Why don't you tweet me? It's just my name, Gina Grad. And don't tag Vinny. Don't tag Vinny because we want these to be a surprise. So um, just at Gina Grad and tell me what you think Vinny should try on the show and I'll add it to the list. And Gina is telling me and um, I she's telling me the day of the show and I have to go out and get it. Yeah. Number one. So it has to be something that's gettable at a regular grocery store. Yeah. Just whatever you, you know, snack foods and stuff. Right. And um, the other thing is um, if I've had it before, I'll let her know, but I'll still try it. If, yeah. it's, you know, light years. Well, and that's and that's the same thing we do with my stepson. If he goes, oh, no, gross. I already know I don't like tomato. I go, well, you know what? Then we're going to try it every six months because your taste buds change. So you know what, Vinny? Maybe you'll love it in your uh, in your years. <laughs> you yeah, look, if I like it. something, I'll say I like it, but I'll, I'll also talk about what's bad in it. Of um, course. By the way, folks, go back to last Friday. You want to hear that show. Gina came on and opened up about being a stepmom and how she met her husband, and just the whole thing. Uh, so go back. Go back one week. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are we doing? No, no. Math. Go forward. I'm sorry. <laughs> go we, we get your thing. DeLorean. Get it up to 88 miles per hour. Yeah, and, and go through the flux capacitor. <laughs> and get over to this Friday. We'll be doing sorry. it soon. How about that? Yeah, come go, go to this Friday, and Gina will be on the show talking only about the book and the inspiration of the book and on and on and on. So there you have it. Um, <laughs> and the book, you can go to VinnyTotteries.com, click through the Amazon banner. The book is yes. going to be in my book club. Go get it. Don't just get it. Rate and review the book right away. Thank and, you. Um, that will help Gina a million percent. So yes. Do that. My extra mom. And if for some reason something weird is coming up or I don't know, just do my extra mom, Gina Grad. And it is right there. And it's um, hardcover and soft cover. They're both awesome. But I have to tell you, I'm holding the hardcover and it feels like awesome. So if you really if you really want to do it right, get yourself a hardcover. And uh, I think Vinny can also um, maybe we'll talk about this a little bit, too, on the, the next show on the Friday show. Um, I don't set the prices, A, and B, I don't set the prices to become a millionaire because guess what? Book margins are razor thin. If it if this book no. is, you know, $24.99, I ain't seeing $24.99. So please yeah, no, don't no, think no. I'm uh don't think I'm trying to screw anybody. Yeah, no, that you know, Amazon sets those prices and um, you know, and look, that's her first ISBN number, folks. That's yeah. uh, that's she is now in the Library of Congress. Very that woman made the Library of Congress <laughs> right next to me. I got I got two ISB numbers. Woo! ISBN numbers. So you're getting there, Gina. You want to? I'll get there. Um. So go go check that out. You know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Um. It is the first of March. That means that the last promo code is over with. Tune in on Friday. I will have a new promo code for a different one of my companies. And you guys can enjoy a savings from that. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I have to go look and see what I can do without actually screwing myself in the process. <laughs> so we will do that. On behalf of Gina Grad, uh, this is a song that we made popular on the Monday show. And we haven't played it in a long time, but I feel like I need to do it here. So here okay. we go. Oh, 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 wait, if we're going to play music, we got to turn this off. <laughs> 